have John Herbst. He's a former U.S. Consul General uh, in Jerusalem, and he's joining us from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, Mr. Herbst, for joining us on the show. Uh, what do you make of these very different messages coming from the key two protagonists in, uh, in Israel and the United States? Well, I think this is a, uh, a issue of some concern. But there's one thing missing in the discussion so far that I've heard, which is that Hamas launched a savage terrorist attack, murdering what, 1,200, 1,400, mainly Israeli civilians, accompanied by rape of children and women, and that the destruction of hospitals is a direct result of Hamas putting its weapons right under hospitals and its command centers right under hospitals. So it's not as if Israelis are going out to destroy hospitals per se. They're going out to destroy the military capacity of Hamas that launched that horror, horrific attack in October, and that is pledged to continue attacking in that fashion. But Israel is so obliged is under created... international law to mediate and, uh, and ensure that it's following international law in terms of the, the way that it's bombing Gaza. Well, there, there's no clear argument that they have violated international law because, again, Hamas has deliberately placed its military assets amidst civilians under hospitals. So this is, this is a, a situation created by Hamas. Now, uh, maybe Israel has overdone it. Um, Biden seems to think so. I don't think that that reflects concern for Palestinians. And having, having served as U.S. Consul General Jerusalem, working directly with Yasser Arafat and the Palestinian Authority, I spent many, many, many hours in Gaza. I know it well. I feel for the Palestinian people, but first and foremost, because their leadership is a terrorist band that has, has launched this war. Well, now, again, maybe Israel can do this more, more surgically. Maybe. But I don't think that's the only issue at stake. But well, we have a vote coming up at the UN General Assembly, one calling again for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, one which is attracting a vast amount of support from the majority of the UN Correct. members. Uh, and we have, uh, in, in advance of that, a US amendment that's been tabled, uh, which wants to insert condemnation of the Hamas attack, which you, you mentioned just now. If, if that is right. voted and approved of, by the UN General Assembly. What does the US do then? Does it, is it then obliged to at least abstain or vote with such a motion? Normally, not always, but normally in a situation like that, the country which introduces something new, which is accepted, will modify its position on the, on the resolution. Um, I can't tell you for sure that'll happen here, but it certainly raises the odds. And so what then but happens I mean, to the US-Israel relationship if, if you know, if we see that gamed out and the U.S. ends up voting that to happen, in that way. It's safe to say that, that the Netanyahu government will be annoyed. They'll probably criticize uh, Biden. And that reflects the politics of Netanyahu's hard right-wing coalition. Um, so that, that, that is another factor which is important in how these things play out. I don't think it will shape the U.S.-Israeli relationship, but it does make... Netanyahu's position in Israel more uncomfortable, and that might persuade him at least to change his position some. All right. Might. John Herbst, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.